Welcome everyone to uh, this Meet the Winners webinar um, to celebrate the recent Social Partnership Forum Awards for Partnership Working at its Best. Um, I'm Helga Pyle, um, I'm Head of Health at Unison and I co-chair the Social Partnership Forum um, with Danny Mortimer from NHS Employers um, who will uh, be speaking to you in a little while. Um, so I'm really delighted that we've got the opportunity to, um, to hold this event and for many of you to be here and to share and celebrate and learn from the excellent um, working that uh, East Cheshire have been engaged with. Um, it's my first time doing this event, so I'm really excited to kind of um, hear more about um, all the great work and, and to hear your questions um, from the audience as well. Um, so I'm just going to go through a few kind of housekeeping um, notes um, and then we will get as swiftly as we can to the main event. Um, so I'm obviously going to join you all in congratulating our winners. Um, it's a very uh, prestigious award this and um, it's really great that they've been able to make the time to come here today and share with us. Um, I want to thank Chamberlain Dunn who've organised the webinar on behalf of HPMA um, and we will have hopefully plenty of time for your questions. Um, the webinar will also be recorded so that uh, others who aren't able to be here today will be able to, to share. And um, if we can ask people to just keep cameras and audio off and to submit questions via the chat, then Danny later will kind of field those and put them to our panel. Um, so at the end of the uh, webinar, a link will be shared in the chat to an evaluation and we'd be really grateful if attendees could, could complete that. Um, so just to introduce the awards then, um, 2024 was the 15th year that the National Social Partnership Forum has sponsored the HPMA Excellence in People Award for Partnership Working between Employers and Trade Unions. Um, and we're really, we're really glad that we are able to offer that sponsorship because partnership working is something that we all are very committed to and put a lot of effort into at national, regional and local levels. And it's really always great to be able to identify, celebrate and showcase the good practice and the outcomes from that as well. Um, so there will be a case study of East Cheshire's work to be published on the SPF web website. Um, and Karen, Rachel and Ruth will also be joining um, a future meeting of the SPF wider group, which will be chaired by the new minister, Karen Smith. So that will be a great uh, opportunity as well for them to kind of have a, a, a good platform to, to share and for the minister to um, understand more about how, how the work's been done. So I think that's really all I want to say. Let's um, let's get um, into into the detail of the of the award and the case study. Um, so without further ado, I will hand over to Karen, Rachel, and Ruth uh, to present to you on what they've been working on. Thank you. Thank you, Helga. Um, hopefully, colleagues will be able to see our slides. Um, if you could just give us a, a thumbs up when people can see them. Um, I'm Rachel Charlton, I'm Director of uh, People and Communications at East Cheshire Trust. And before we start, if I can just introduce my colleagues. Um, here on my left, um, I've got Karen Cashmore, who is our Chair of Staff Side, um, and uh, Ruth Knighton, who is our Workforce Transformation um, lead. Firstly, just wanted to say thank you so much um, for uh, inviting us today. Um, particular thanks to Chamberlain Dunn um, for the award, um, NHS Employers and the Social Partnership Forum. Um, really pleased to be here and um, to talk about our work, um, which has been shaped by our colleagues um, and our trade unions from the outset. Um, it's based on what our uh, people in the organisation told us um, they wanted um, and together uh, we've worked um, very collaboratively to support the project. 
Um, throughout the work, we, we've sort of recognised that there were no sides, and, and I guess this is fundamental to um, all of our um, working um, as a staff side and management side. Um, we really believe that by working together, um, we can make uh, more of a difference and, and in terms of this particular project um, a real uh, potential to improve the health and well-being um, of all of our people. Um, working together, getting out there, really listening uh, to what our staff told us um, was uh, I guess a fundamental principle um, of our approach and that enabled us um, to, to develop something that was really meaningful um, that colleagues have actually um, said um, has really helped them in terms of their um, bringing them their whole self to work um, their sort of sense of belonging um, morale and engagement in the organization um, so it's been incredibly um, incredibly powerful to hear some of the stories and I, I'm sure Ruth and Karen um, will talk those uh, talk through those um, in in more detail in a minute I suppose just from from my perspective um, you know we have said right from the beginning um, let's do this as one and I think the project really has demonstrated um, that there have been no boundaries, there have been no walls. Um, this has been about staff side um, and uh, colleagues from across the trust working together um, for the benefit of everybody. Um, with that, if I can introduce Karen. Thank you, Rachel. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Karen and I've been a Unison Workplace representative for 20 years and I've been staff side chair here for three years now. So where did it all began? So back in early 2022, Alison, who is our healthy workplace coach and who unfortunately can't be here with us today, and myself started having discussions about the impact of menopause and the feeling that maybe the trust could do a bit more for staff, for those that were affected either personally or within an environment at work or home. At that time, 83% of our workforce were women. And of those, 33% of them were aged between 45 and 55, which generally is when menopause and perimenopause are most likely to occur. So we set out gathering data on how menopause impacts working lives to produce a plan that would meet the needs of all our staff. We used bespoke menopause surveys and wellbeing walkabouts to reach as many staff as possible. I was also involved with a three month fixed term project called the Winter Wellbeing In Reach Team, which gave us a great opportunity to go into all trust departments, wards, and locations to speak openly to staff about what they would like to be seen to be putting in place. Alison and I were given the freedom to shape the direction of the project and we gained support from the executive team for a menopause work programme. Both a male executive and a female chair agreed to champion our project and this showed the importance of normalising conversations about the impact of menopause regardless of gender. So what did we do? We established the Menopause Working Group and brought in other stakeholders such as Occupational Health, our counselling team, our communications team and a number of various interested staff including a specialist physiotherapist, an A&E consultant, ward staff, finance, HR and a mixture from our community staff. To ensure all unions were represented we also included other colleagues from Partnership Forum and our LNC chair. In total, five of the seven unions on site were involved at some level with this project. We also worked with colleagues at a neighbouring trust, Cheshire East Council and various menopause charities in a bid to pool all our resources. Over the past two years, we've produced a range of resources, including a menopause policy and a manager's toolkit to provide that key information for staff and managers. A broad range of resources for everyone to access is now on our Trust Intranet page. We now have over 60 menopause champions in just as many departments around the Trust who are invaluable at passing on up-to-date information and signposting where needed. 
We have weekly wellbeing staff communications which offer signposting, helplines and further advice. Our bi-monthly menopause cafes are offered in partnership with a neighbour in trust and we also advertise the national menopause cafes for our staff to attend. These both cover information, staff stories and useful topics from various specialists. To date, we have distributed 50 menopause boxes across the Trust. These contain not only vital information, but everyday hygiene packs like deodorant, sanitary products, fans, spare underwear, scrub trousers, cleaning products, flannels, etc. Since these have been produced, staff have evolved these into their own areas and they're now hygiene boxes for both men and women. The staff are filling the boxes with products of their own. Our occupational health offer has now got an identified menopause leave, leave, sorry, lead <laughs> for staff referrals. Menopause has now got its own category for absence on the e-rostering system. We annually celebrate Menopause Day and have also held a virtual big conversation featuring staff stories about the impact of menopause and how the Trust has helped them. We have regular availability for a menopause friendly uniform. This is lightweight and can be requested by any member of staff. Ruth. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, on your screen now is just um, a cut of our staff intranet page, we call it HR Direct here at the Trust, um, which shows the range of, of resources that we've sourced and made available to people from um, education and training um, uh, resources through to um, recorded webinars, lunch and learns, um, our policies and, and external links to charities and support, um, just so that our, our workforce, our, you know, our colleagues have this available to them at any time um, and they can pick and mix in terms of what, what they have access to and what they, what, what they would find useful. Um, so we do have the, a dedicated menopause page on, on that as well. In terms of my role um, in all this, my official role is I lead and, and I have done for some time on workforce wellbeing and you know, it started off with a conversation between myself and Alison um, because of personal interest <laughs> as well as this recognition that, that we could be doing more but that was all I did. Um, I, I think what the point of this was that um, Alison and Karen took it forward. Um, I was there to provide support, a really modest budget um, and to help unblock any barriers, but certainly they they were joint leads um, on this work. Um, as Rachel and Karen have said, trade unions were not just involved, they, they, they took that leadership role um, and the staff side chair had dedicated facility time to liaise with trade unions and other, you know, other colleagues across the trust and beyond um, to ensure resources and support were tailored to, to colleagues' needs. The initiative has been shown to be a success. So, you know, from my perspective, looking at statistics and data, you know, positive staff survey results for support offered. I think there was a 1.62% improvement in the staff survey metric relating to the organisation taking positive action on health and wellbeing and people generally feeling able to have better quality conversations with their managers, um, uh, which was really something that we, we wanted to achieve with this. Um, we uh, that was between the 22 and 20, 23 staff survey and um, we hope to see you know further evidence of that uh, with the survey that, that's live at the moment and we have seen a reduction in unplanned absence um, around you know the, the staff groups affected the NHS um, England's menopause network has recognized the trust successes in partnership working and this project um, and the working group have been invited to share, you know, did share their story um, and achievement with other organisations through through that network. We're expanding this working group now. Um, we, we've done so much on menopause, um, but it's just taking, it's it's growing its own, it's, it's becoming a self-led group um, that focuses on women's health and psychological safety um, to build on the momentum of this project and you know the, the the wider topics and certainly you know raising concerns and sexual safety is something that we're really focused on for the for the coming for the coming months um we we just we use partnership working to support other elements of staff health and well-being yeah we work collaboratively on well-being projects including this psychological safety suicide prevention 
um, mental health, raising concerns, sexual safety. So th this is just the way we do things around here. Um, so um, hopefully um, we've been able to demonstrate that. In terms of um, you know, what we've learned from, from this project and, and the way in which we work together, um, there's several you know, factors that we believe were key to the success. You know, we, we engage with a wide range of stakeholders. We recognise that our male colleagues also feel the impact of menopause when we held our big conversation, which was very much in the, um, in the style of a Schwartz round. Um, our chief exec talked about his experience and his wife's experiences. So I, I think that you know, it, was, it, it wasn't just a women's issue. It, it, was, it was a trust-wide um, whole colleagues issue. Um, that I've, I've mentioned it before. There was shared power, being empowered. You know, Karen and Alison being empowered as well as supported when needed was invaluable um, and built trust. I, I did not manage this project closely. You know, I didn't need to. There, there was so much work um, going on without my um, involvement <laughs> or needing to, to take any form of control. Um, that allowed the time and space for engagement and co-production. We, we have worked really closely with our colleagues at Mid Cheshire um, on this work. Um, and we, you know, the pooling of those resources um, has been really helpful and not reinventing the wheel. You know, we, we all um, brought things to the table and we shared, we shared whatever we brought to the table. So that, that was good. Keeping our people's needs at the heart of the project, you know, it, it, that, that was key um, to just keep on track. It, keep on talking to staff, um, you know, our colleagues about what their needs were and, and not um, going off in our own direction about what we believed was, was the way that this needed to go. Board level support, it's been mentioned, that was key, um, particularly having our, our medical director um, championing this work and speaking at that, at that big conversation um, was, was really important. And the chief executive, again, sharing, sharing his um, experiences was, was really valuable. And of course, collecting data, we, we, we know that we need to collect evidence and data to, to continually measure and continually improve the work that we're doing on this project, as well as um, health and wellbeing as a whole, um, and taking that back to staff side and, and to our senior managers in the organisation um, to demonstrate um, the impact of, of what, you know, what we do. Um, I, I just wanted to acknowledge this award, um, you know, reflecting on something Karen said at the shortlisting stage when she was interviewed, um, you know, that actually she already felt like a winner <laughs> um, because there are people in this organisation who do stop Karen in the corridor and do stop Alice and do speak to Alison as part of coaching conversations as well as her wider work to say what a difference it's made having a much more positive relationship with their work with the line manager and uh, being able to have open conversations or that they've got a lightweight uniform um, and you know that, that the how this work has gone into other areas around health and well-being conversations um, so yeah thank you for listening um, I think how, I just wanted to um, our final slide shows Alison you, you can't see Alison on screen today but Alison is there and she's here with us in spirit so um, Karen you just wanted thank to you so much um, guys and congratulations again on on winning the um, on winning the award a, a few things just to to pick up on then if if I if I may thank you. oh there we go um, like, can you hear me okay I just lost you there for a second yes Yes. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much um, for that, and congratulations again for for the um, for the award. Um, a couple of things to kind of follow up on and, and kick us off, if I if I may. It, you obviously said um, earlier when we were talking that East Cheshire is a kind of a, a, one of the smaller trusts in the country, but is is mighty in terms of the things it, it achieves. How does how does partnership working work more generally, Karen? Um, in terms of, you know, what's, what's the kind of context, how, how, what are the kind of structures and ways of working that you have at East Cheshire for partnership working? So we have our partnership forum, which is made up of all the unions that are allowed to take part. Um, we meet once a month with the executives. Um, we are heavily involved in policies and processes. There's very much an open door policy that you can knock on anyone's door to say, oh, have you got five minutes? Can we just have a chat? It's, it's very informal, I feel, here at East Cheshire. Um, it's very friendly. Um, I know that if they've got an ongoing case, I can go and speak to somebody from HR. You know, and we can have those conversations to find out 
you know where exactly are we what's going on and I think it's that partnership working that makes this more like a family rather than an employer versus a trade union we still do the challenging and we still do the negotiating don't think it's just a yes all the time you know we do have those hard conversations um but I think having that fundamental relationship to put as your base and then build on that for everything else you know all the challenging conversations that we do have i think that is key to it it's my in my family um we often have those challenging conversations too so yeah i absolutely get what you mean and you you attend the trust board as well so yes so i attend i don't have a vote on trust board but i do attend every month and we're always asked to put in a a perspective from staff so it could be whatever the um the issue or even the plus you know it's not always negative there's pluses there's negatives and we're allowed to say that to non-execs and to the execs um, we're given that voice and obviously it's heard by the public as well understood that that's brilliant and, and one of the things that's really i suppose was really striking as i read your case study and listened to you today is that this is clearly a longer term effort. You know, there was clearly work that you flagged uh, in terms of the winter check ins that led to the work on menopause. And in turn, the work on menopause is, is leading on to other work on women's health and women's safety, um, particularly sexual safety in the in the workplace. So that there is that sense of kind of long term work, particularly on health and well-being. Does that how long has that been going on for in the organisation? now? I. Um... I probably started many years. Um, I think the first time I was given um, facilitated time was probably over 10 years ago. Um, it wasn't a lot. I think it was like two half days a week. And it's just evolved totally from, yes, we're doing the management of change. Yes, we're doing um, casework. But at the same time, we're still doing... Um, all the network groups we you know we take part in um everything <laughs> i feel you know we've got the disabled network we've got all of them you know and i think they all come together and we all feed back into partnership forums so all the unions are involved but i do feel it's been many years that we've now got to such a good space that we're in Ruth, has, has the health and well-being work been a particular focus for partnership working yeah, from as far back as I can remember, really, I've been attending partnership forum with um, not just policies and, and process, but we do development sessions with our staff side colleagues. So we take staff survey results, say, for example, and that goes back quite a few years um, and uh, and pick on a particular topic um, and say, right, these are the statistics here. This is the data. What what can you well, how can we work together to address this? So, you know, frequently we um we would take issues around well-being and engagement um, and uh, again now psychological safety but and and we would also do it to develop policies and processes around um, policies around um, stress management and our stress risk assessment stress risk assessment processes um, so yeah we we kind of done that for a long long time yeah from as long yeah. as I can remember I've been here 17 years but um, <laughs> yeah um, we, we do it with so we do we've done it with our equalities work as well our ed and i um work as well that's been something that we've yeah. always worked together on and I, that's one of the reasons why i wanted to to kind of draw draw them out is that i know i know there were many things that impressed the judges but but the the sense of this being a truly long-term kind of part of a truly long-term piece of work um really struck the judges and i also know that um, yeah, the the all of us can kind of focus on a, a project. You know, we do a project, and we whereas that, that that's not what's happening with you guys. And I guess there's a message to everybody to say, look, actually start with a project, but it, allow it to lead on to other things. See it as a kind of natural, a natural kind of development, um, and that only makes the the kind of partnership stronger. There's a question. I don't know, Rachel, if you've got any views. Are there any things you'd have done differently? Um, uh, in relation to this project in particular, are there any kind of things you tried that didn't work out or things you'd wish you'd done sooner, whatever it whatever it may be? 
I think one of the learnings for me was that early engagement of the board. So probably not something I would have done differently, but but definitely something that I've reflected. How can we use it in other um, in other work streams? So rather than this being seen as a HR project, actually, and, it, and we have applied this uh, for some of our EDI work, um, actually asking other board colleagues to sponsor. So, so I felt that that was going to be more impactful um, than me sponsoring everything. So our, our medical uh, director, John, actually sponsored um, this piece of work and, and actually that really set the tone um, for it. I think that was really helpful in terms of bringing some of our medics on board, um, but also the fact that, um, you know, he was able to tell his story about how he was impacted by um, colleagues um, sort of who were going through the menopause, including his wife, which, you know, he was able to share share those stories. So I think that's definitely something that um, we, um, we definitely, you know, it worked for us and we have used, we have used that approach again. So um, in terms of the EDI work, um, all of our um, board uh, members um, sponsor a different area um, of EDI work so it isn't all coming through um, the HR route which I think is really helpful. Um, I suppose the other thing um, I would say is um, just reflecting on Karen's point about you know we don't we don't always agree but actually we get there, we work in partnership. I think that's the sort of fundamental principle of our partnership working is um, by having those discussions, by working together, by doing the development sessions, we'll come out with something that's stronger. And actually, that's something that we both want for our colleagues um, across the organisation. So, um, and, and I think everybody is behind that principle. And, and, that, and that point about um, this not being a HR thing or a HR trade union thing, this being a board thing, this being an organisation thing, this this is some of these these are topics that matter to the to the organization a couple of things that people um uh, wanted to follow up with you one of which is that, that last thing rachel just mentioned which is around the the edi work uh, and to just understand the partnership approach to that in particular and how management side trade unions are working together on the edi piece particularly after what happened in terms of the the kind of racist and Islamophobic uh, kind of incidents over the summer. Just yeah. could you just talk us through how that's working at the moment? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we can both both do that. Um, I, you know, we have taken that approach. As I say, each um, each exec and each non-exec. Um, sponsors a particular theme so um, you know wh whichever theme it is um, uh, we take our policies our development plan um, through our partnership forum Karen equally given you sit on the board you see our approach so we did a this is our strategy and um, which came to board last time which um, Karen was able to hear um, and uh, contribute to. So that was that real sense of we do this um, together. Um, I think Ruth's um, highlighted the point about development sessions. Um, we have a, a, a partnership forum meeting, which is then followed by um, a development session. So every, uh, every time we meet as a, um, a partnership forum, um, the second half of the session is development. And that is that bit of coming up we've got this particular project or we've got this particular piece of work. Let's work out how we're gonna work. You know, it might be briefing colleagues, but each equally, it might be shaping um, the new policy um, agenda. And I, I suppose, sorry, the other thing I just wanted to sort of pull out, Danny, which I'm really pleased about is the fact that we got so many people engaged and um, supporting this. I think the fact that our menopause boxes, our women's wellbeing boxes, have now been taken over by colleagues in those areas and actually changed um, so that it's an everybody um, wellbeing uh, box, I think is incredibly powerful um, because it is that bit of you know, we, we've we've got our colleagues out there. This isn't an initiative which is run by our central team. That was really striking in um, the way that, that actually an element of it kind of took on a life of its own. Um, you know, this this isn't, um, yeah, people, people have taken ownership of it. They've extended the idea. Um, uh, and in such a practical, 
impactful kind of way. It, it, it was it, it, it was a really striking feature of of what you you mentioned. Well, it it, it sounds as if as we we might be hearing from you again next year around the EDI um, work that you're work that you're doing. There's also some interest in the in the chat about. Um, um, well, actually, I, before we come on to the question about the pandemic, there was real interest in, in terms of those um, those boxes and how they kind of got started and how they were funded. And then, as you said, Rachel, they've, they've kind of actually staff have kind of taken ownership of them and rolled them out under their own steam. But that that initial kind of kickoff, how that how that happened and how you made that happen. Yeah, so so we we were very um, pleased to get some charitable funds. We bid to our charitable funds um uh offer to support the the boxes it wasn't a lot of money um you know it, it was just about actually supporting um our colleagues with what they needed so it's just a small amount to get it kicked off i think initially we were set we set them up with you know a basic um filled them up with basic items that, that we thought would help um, and then each area literally took the ownership of each box. Originally, we started putting them into female toilets, into the restrooms, and but now they've come out and they're actually in staff rooms mm -hmm. and they're classed as uh, staff hygiene boxes and people fill them with their own things from home and each area develops that box into what they feel staff actually need. So whereas our you know so in, in initial guidance was menopause so therefore potentially female these have now come out and it's just so good to see that they've evolved so much we do go round ad hoc and just check um but to see what's in them sometimes is yeah really amazing we, so. we also um ask people to sign for those boxes and take ownership of those boxes so it we we kind of baked it into the project didn't we mm -hmm. that actually right you've signed for this now you will now to take that and and take care of it and you know encourage that and, and share that with your colleagues in your team so that there there was this sense of we're handing this over to you now for you to keep and for you to develop in the way that you want it so yeah i think and, and having the well-being champions as well that network of champions that we've got out there um, has really helped with some of the communications around that that isn't just a one-off initiative it's um it's something for them to 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 be to build on we shouldn't underestimate the the kind of appetite of their their trust charity their hospital charity to help with projects like this and, and as you said rachel it's a relatively modest investment um but but sometimes these simplest things are the things that can kind of have the biggest the biggest impact as as you've as you've shown um one of the things that people were were interested uh in was the kind of I think, I think they suspect some of the work that you've talked about has its roots back in the kind of health and well-being work you did together in the pandemic. Um, so I don't know if you've got any reflections on, again, how you work together and um, management side, staff side in, in, in terms of that stuff during the pandemic and, and how that helped or, or any challenges you had to overcome in terms of some of, some of the kind of current fantastic things you're doing together. I, th I think we actually started our well-being champions pre-pandemic. So actually, we recognised um, um, a challenge in terms of, um, I guess, engaging, communicating with colleagues. We're, we're an acute and community organisation. So uh, sometimes it's relatively easy to go around the hospital site, but um, our other sites, our community sites, uh, sometimes quite quite a challenge. Um, and uh, we decided that we would uh, um, encourage well-being champions who would be people who, uh, I think you read this, you led this approach, um, did, Ruth, didn't you? <laughs> so I think once a month people got together um, and um, I guess were informed about the offer so that there was another person. So this isn't about being a professional advisor, this is about just being a signposter, being a champion for our health and well-being offer. Um, and I, I guess through the pandemic, we we used that model to help us continue to get some of the messages um, out to our staff 
and back. I think that that's the important thing as well. Um, some of those colleagues were um, uh, staff side colleagues as well. So you know that again, that was a, a joint piece of work. But Ruth, was there anything else on the the wellbeing champions? No, I think uh, the, the champions work that we were doing locally kind of preceded some of the the more national. We again with the pandemic, we found we were a little bit ahead of the game with some of it really, and we. Um, they they did initially start at people who we just gave notice boards to and said, would you put things on your notice boards? <laughs> so some of this was a little bit under the radar. We just kind of evolved it and said, well, now you're doing, putting things on notice boards. Let's get you to sign a pledge. Let's get you to you know wear the badge and to um, and to become menopause champions or become mental health first. You know, have the mental health first aid awareness training. So um, we kind of built on it from there. Really, it was a it was stealth, uh, really, <laughs> you know, from where we started, how we built on that. Um, and, uh, yeah, we've got, we've got quite a few of them now. But, yeah, that certainly the pandemic was a – I smile when I think about, you know, that we were inundated with all of that donations. And I remember, Karen, we were trying to manage donations from – bottles of water to pot noodles to makeup and, and cosmetics and you know we, we had to work together to uh, to just prioritize what what was going on at that time um, and from the allies work you know those champions came the health and well-being conversations and I just remember all of all of that kind of trying to put aside some of the donations work to focus on what was really important and I think we as staff side we because the majority of us are clinical so we were obviously on the front line obviously working within the pandemic and I think we were that key link to the trust and manage you know because people weren't necessarily on site as much I think the big thing was obviously teams came out of it I couldn't use teams for love and the money but you know during the pandemic that was our key link to be able to talk to execs talk to HR you know to everybody else so I think it was us as staff side taking views issues anything from staff on the floor we were able to go round. we were in those areas anyway doing our ordinary day work so I think it's that key link between bringing everybody together but obviously it became in a virtual world um, which was very new to a lot of people no, th thank you and, and again you know, the, that sense of um of how you work together and how you kind of you try things and you be prepared to let them evolve and grow and kind of build momentum is is, is really striking um there's a, a couple of people who have warned you they're going to get in touch to to follow up and and i know um I know your interest in in taking forward the work, particularly on menopause, was about improving well-being in its broadest sense. And one aspect of that, and it's one aspect of many, is attendance and and the impact on that. And and there was just a question that's been asked about whether you've seen any impact on on attendance, improved attendance, because of the approach you're taking to menopause. As I said, I know it's not the the only the only metric there's many many kind of markers of success that you have in terms of the work has it had that kind of impact yeah i i think so i mean the use of the um the menopause part on esr that still is yet to be embedded so we know that people being um unwell due to menopause related illness it goes down as many other subjects doesn't it, it you know the the link to you know am i stressed or depressed or am I you know got uh, sleep issues and things like that but yeah we've definitely seen a reduction in absence um, but what we haven't seen at the moment is truly embedding managers using that um, uh, that category on 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 the e roster um, but we've still got work to do there I think it take that these things take time um, but yeah we've definitely seen a, a, an Im improvement well, listen, the, there's lots of compliments in the in the chat box for the for the work that you've done together, and I I think also that's kind of shows the kind of really honest, straightforward way you've talked about um, what you've done and and how you've done it, and the kind of candor you've got about some of the things you've still got to to do, um, um, and the really thoughtful way in which you've kind of taken the work forward, and you've used it to kind of you know build momentum for other things as well. So really grateful. Um, 
uh, to you. Um, uh, we'll have a virtual round of applause for, for Karen, uh, for Ruth and for, for Rachel uh, in terms of uh, taking us through uh, the webinar today and, and answering all the questions so, so brilliantly. Uh, and congratulations again. But yeah, a virtual round of applause for, for you and thank you for all your time. The details of the case study uh, have been posted in the chat box and are available uh, on the SPF website. Uh, and the HPMA would love to get your feedback as well about about this webinar and um, so they can use it to kind of um, build uh, for future events. But but yeah, Helga and I were really delighted to to sponsor sponsor the award again um, together for SPF and and really delighted that you entered and uh, and that you such a strong such a strong winner uh, in terms of this year. So thank you so much, guys. Sorry, we weren't muted. Thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll bring it to a close there.